You're good to go, Kelly. Okay. Yes, uh, welcome everyone to the March 2nd uh, meeting of the Albany Common Council's Public Safety Committee. Uh, just for the record, I will call out the members. Uh, committee member Alfredo Bowerin, Thomas Hoey, uh, myself, uh, our members of the committee. Uh, Mr. Igo won't be with us. He's feeling a little bit under the weather. And Ms. Frederick should be joining us shortly. Uh, we, along with uh, Council Member Doshe, uh, there's Ms. Uh, Frederick. Council Member Doshe, uh, we have our clerk, Daniel Gillespie, and our Research Council, uh, John Raphael Pichardo. Um, so, I mean, we'll just get right into it. The idea is for us to uh, have a discussion and conversation around that last uh iteration of of the the plan or or, or the, the the reports that we got from from uh the administration regarding the police reforms they added some things uh kind of set some some uh timelines and goals and whatnot and so this is a conversation uh that we're we're you know uh, where we're discussing that uh we've also been joined by uh council member farrell Conti, council members Farrell and Conti. Um, so uh, yeah, we're, this is where we're discussing the changes made to the plan. And um, the idea is to just get some input from some of the committee members, then council members, and then we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, once we get into public, uh, we got a three minute time limit on, on uh, speaking. Uh, and so with that, I would just uh, like to, you know, kind of get uh, an impression from the committee members uh, uh, on the changes that were made. Um, it, they, uh, they set some goals and and and, and kind of uh, in timelines and reporting, uh, and I just want to see what the members have to think about it first, then the council, and then uh, public. So, uh, committee members. Any, if, and if you if you have questions or comments, hey, Kelly, I I got a question. I read through the, it was like a it was over ninety pages. One of the things that kept coming up was this has been re redacted, redacted. I don't know if I pronounced that right. And there was stuff like left blank. Is that going to be filled in later? And that's because this is the final draft. I, I was kind of confused about that. And so. Which which version are you working off of? The one that got sent out with the meeting notice that's dated February 12th. It says uh, City of Albany Policing Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Amended yeah. Final Draft Report. That one, it's got the, it's actually uh, all told 112 pages or so. Yes. That's the one, you you mentioned 90 pages, that's why. Well, I, I'm sorry. I was looking at the index and yeah. I didn't go through the whole thing. Um, I got up to about 60. But I did see quite a few sections where, you know, it was like left blank um, to be filled in later or something was said. So that's what I was curious about. Okay, um, you gotta, you're gonna have to direct me to specifically what you're. Okay, well, it was under the chemical agents was one of the areas that that stick in my head, um, where the stuff was left, you know, kind of, uh, you know, up in the air. If other people want to comment, I'll go through and, and find out specifically to be able to give you pages. Okay. I, I, I've got to be honest, I have not gone through the new hundred and something document. I, I, I did go through the 94 page document. I have not gone through the new document, so I wouldn't be able to tell you any comments on any differences at this point okay. on that. Um, right. But I, I, can, I, can, I can look at that document for the next meeting. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, I mean, that was sent out today. But no, sent out with the meeting notice a, a while. Meeting ago. notice a week ago. Okay. Yeah. I didn't pick that up. I, yeah. I was I was finishing this one. <laughs> right. It's, it's right. dated. It's dated it's, February 11th. I, I thought I did my homework. You guys, you guys reading the assignment but, on me. <laughs> but you, but you, what you actually did the the what we got in in the updated plan is 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 like. Uh, 
uh, maybe a, a 30 page uh, add on to the front end of it. So the bulk of it is the report that you already read, but the front, uh, the beginning, the executive summary and the other pages, uh, and it's probably the first 24 pages kind of laid out the plan and shaped how, you know, some uh, reporting. Okay. Uh, requirements and goals and stuff like that. So you got the gist of it. It's just, okay. and actually, what we're here to discuss is the is the changes, the way the way it was converted from just the reports to uh, their their plan. Uh, so, oh, okay, Miss uh, Frederick. So, uh, two questions, I guess. One is, what are our next steps in terms of? Do we take what? The, the now the plan right with the with the months one year two years three years or do we take that and do we adopt that or are we as a whole or are we as the council deciding like which pieces we want to move forward I just want to understand like what our next step is here also yeah. to be compliant with the, with the governor's request right and I'll let Mr. Pachado speak more to it but the idea is for the resolution to adopt it all I mean there are many pieces to it so if we broke it all out and try to create legislation for each component, I mean, it'd be maddening. So the idea is to take it as a whole uh, and, and go from there. But Mr. Pichardo, you wanna? Okay. Yeah, so brief, so really what the governor's executive order says is that um, the mayor starts it and then you know we as legislative body receive the report and we receive public comment on from the public regarding the report. Um, then we have to adopt the plan or a plan um, what I was speaking with um, President Pro Tem Kimbrell about this is, you know, the resolution that I've drafted is really just merely a placeholder for now. What I was doing, I went through the document and what I was it, thinking what we could do as a council is provide, there's things that we've done as a council outside what the administration has done. Um, so I think this, this resolution gives us that opportunity to put in what we as a council have done in addition to what the administration has done. And so I kind of took it as what we do with the budget with our budget intent memo. So we can kind of throw in the resolution kind of like a budget and like our intentions of what we hope to add, um, what the plan is adopting and putting what we've done as well. Okay. And then second question, um, would it be helpful for us to like walk through sort of those timelines like the, the first year uh, recommendations and then sort of like break it in, in that in that way for these meetings based on the timeline of the plan. Okay, I'll just repeat that one more time. So I guess for this for these conversations, are we talking through like section by section or are we just sort of, what's, yeah. yeah. Right, so the goal was to just have a, if members had, if we'd gotten through this and had a general idea what was there and had comment on it was it, the idea was for in this meeting for council members to kind of give their offer their thoughts and, and comments and and then really this the most important part of this is the to me at least is is the public input and, and what right. they think and their thoughts and, and taking and receiving that from them so right now we're just kind of going through and offering our thoughts and comments about that the changes and then we're going to turn it over to the community to do the same. Um, okay. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Mr. Conti has his hand up. Mr. Conti. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> I've gone through it. Um, and I still don't, you know, it, there's a lot here. Some of it is very detailed, getting into actual, um, you know, general orders and operating procedures uh, and, you know, almost micromanaging some of those provisions in a sense. Some of it's in that there's a lot of specificity there, which we don't necessarily have all the background on. There's a lot more general. Um, and it's really, you know, throwing all the recommendations from the individual work groups together at the beginning and just listing them with some timeframes. Um, what I, I guess I, I still not seeing is, you know, it tied together as a, a plan as opposed to work, you know, reports from individual work groups 
with recommendations, which are in different formats that are then presented to us. And as I say, there's some of them are very detailed as far as, you know, the, 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 the sentence structure in a, you know, general orders or administrative policy or, uh, you know, standard operating procedures in, in the department. So we're not going to go and amend the plan um, in any way. I assume what we'll en end up doing is a resolution which, you know, reviews the process, et cetera, um, and probably, and we'll adopt the plan to be implemented however it's going to be implemented because there's no real guidance in here as to how it's going to be implemented. Um, and, you know, what further action we might need to take separate from this, uh, as far as th there are some that are, do lend themselves to council legislative action um, and some of them are administrative, but, you know, it's, that that's part of the frustration. It's, it's a, a big document without a lot of time to really dig deep into it. That is a bunch of recommendations, but not a narrative plan in terms of this is what we're trying to achieve. So that, that's part of my frustration with it. Um, I would suggest that whatever, you know, in our resolution that we put something in there uh, that does include whoever, may, if it's the chief and the mayor reporting back to us, I don't know if you wanna do it every so often, every six months or whatever, or every quarter in terms of what actions that have been taken to implement the plan or recommendations, something along those lines, because there still there needs to be some accountability back to us uh, in terms of how these recommendations are being uh, adopted or implemented um, and, and the time frame. So, uh, the, and again, the, the time frame structure here that this implementation envisions it from anywhere from 12 months to five years out. That's a long time, wow. um, but again, I, I, it's 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 like a bunch of recommendations, but not tied together in a like a, a real, a, a, an actual plan, with a theme to it, that's given to us, and that's part of the difficulty and that I've that I had in going through it. Yes, and and I I, I too, uh, and and so, um, I like the idea. Uh, that you just mentioned about the quarterly reports. There's something in here that where they suggest a yearly or whatever, but I think stuff has to happen quarterly uh, to like off the rip to kind of to make sure this this stuff is getting done. And, and the greatest concern in this, our concern, and the community's concern is we do these and we've 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 assembled to to go through these processes before. And the minute we we got outside of uh, that process and, and the limelight kind of disappeared. Things kind of fell to the wayside. And this is one of those, those uh, deals where we, we can't afford to, to not have uh, these changes made. I mean, it, it, we, really, we really had to uh, make sure this, this, stuff, this stuff gets taken care of because it's- I think quarterly reporting makes sense actually, as far as the time frame rather than six months, whatever, but quarterly is probably a good idea. Yeah. So and we'll we'll adjust that and and based on some of the stuff that's there, well, uh, we'll make we'll make some suggestions for adjustments. Um, what, without, I mean, it, it, to sit here and go through and change the whole plan would be, you know, it, it, we just there's just not enough, enough time to do that. But certainly, we can we can we can nail down some some de some more details and and, and get some uh, feedback from from the, the administration on how how we move forward with this stuff. Uh, Judy, uh, you're up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I share the confusion and a certain amount of frustration um, with where we're at and, and the idea that this is now some plan. Um, one of the things I'm noticing is that there are places where it does not seem that there is um, clear clear guidance with regard to what is what is supposed to happen and when um, civilian oversight uh, I it looks like they've dealt with the timelines not 
in each one, but later on. Um, couple things that I, I um, am concerned about is that according to these timelines, the shortest timeline is 12 to 18 months. Um, and it seems to me as though it should be zero to 12 months as a goal, you know, within the next 12 months as, you know, one goal um, and, and then look um, beyond that, but some of this should be attainable within the next 12 months, not looking at potential implementation 12 months from now. Essentially, nothing is scheduled to occur within the first 12 months as a goal in, in this timeline. Now, that's not to say that it can't be accomplished or wouldn't be accomplished in that time frame. But um, in, in, in terms of clarity of expectations, I would hope that some of this would be able to be get, gotten done within the next 12 months, as opposed to putting the timeline of 12 to 18 months from now. Um, uh, you know, it, it seems to me to give too much latitude. Um, and I want to say um, not enough gravitas to what we're de dealing with here, really. Um, I noticed that in the summary, I, I also have not read the entire first, it's, it looks like it's um, 20 pages in the beginning. Um, I have not read through every piece of it, but there are some things that I have looked for. One of the things it says in the intro is, We've kept everything, all the recommendations in. We're keeping in, you know, all the recommendations. But then this abbreviated thing in the front um, clearly drops out um, a few things. Um, and I want to say um, specifically with regard to, um, and it says it's not dropping anything out out of respect for the work of the people who worked on this collaborative. So I think in order to be respectful of it, then the first 20 pages should be including a timeline for everything or tell us why you're not including it in the timeline. Let's be respectful uh, of that process. So uh, for police department functions starting on page 13, just covering pages 13 and 14, they've omitted the entire section or any heading relating to interactions with the community. Um, and um, that does talk about something I think that is um, critical here. Um, uh, it's, there's really two things that I think are critical here. One is the whole concept of demilitarization and opting for use of de-escalation. And as an overall concept, if we're really talking about police reform, taking an attitude, having a predisposition towards the idea is you always want to go for de-escalation of a situation um, uh, is, is, is something that I would like to see in the forefront. Instead, it has been deleted from this summary. Um, that particular um, section also dealt with um, the general recommendation for uh, the elimination of the use of tear gas. Um, and so the, I assume this, the first 20 pages is something solely done by the administration. It should be clear that that is done by the administration, that that has not been a work product of the uh, collaborative work group. Um, and um, because it has dropped out some recommendations. When you drop out a recommendation by the, when the administration is dropping out a recommendation, then I think that they need to provide a clear explanation uh, for that. I am appreciative of we are talking about putting my local law C on the agenda for the public safety group. Um, 
presumably, well, I guess it's not going to be before this is adopted because the adoption needs to happen before the end of March, unless we're going to hold a special meeting. But uh, I'm appreciative of the fact that we are going to be discussing that. And I don't think anything uh, in this report should drop out um, those very significant recommendations of that particular uh, work group. With my having identified that as something that has been dropped out without it being flagged as being dropped out, I do think that somebody needs to go through this report, the, this summary, and tell us what else was recommended that has not made it to the final cut and therefore is presumably not, there's no timeline for adoption, there's no timeline for, for action on it or further consideration on it. Um, uh, so, and, and frankly, I think that if there are things that are being dropped out that that's the more appropriate course of action is for it to be included in this with a notation that the administration is recommending that this not be um, included in the timeline um, and that the council should specifically uh, consider those items and whether or not um, further action is required and give us some sort of time frame of maybe six months to review those as part of a plan would be one option uh, in this. Um, all right, I think that that's it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Judy. I would like to say that we, we are gonna be working on local law C, that meeting's on the 24th, so it's after this could, would conceivably pass. We don't necessarily need to hold, I mean, it's a part of these reforms, but I don't, I don't believe that we need to hold up the process to include uh, that in it. Um, so, okay. Um, if I, if I can, if I, all I'm suggesting is that it shouldn't be dropped out of the summary, um, you know, especially since part of what got dropped out is de-escalation as a presumption. Um, and for, uh, for it to be noted that the administration is not recommending that we proceed with those, but the Common Council may take that up separately then should, uh, you know, would be an option there. But I don't think it should just, just, I don't think anything with it having been said in the intro, we're not eliminating any of the recommendations out of respect for the work of the group and then not explain why it's not in the summary with a, an implementation timeline. I think that that's something needs to change there. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Mr. Hoey. Yeah, um, one of the, I found one of the areas that it kind of bothered me um, or just like made me more aware and I still, I'm just understanding now what this first 20 pages are, but it's on page seven. Um, they're talking about pre-planned high-risk situations, emergency service team, patrol rifle team operators. They make a statement. However, the sections of the policies lack the following. And the one that really stuck out was there was a lot of sections redacted, which didn't allow for the full interpretation of some of the policies. And what I don't understand, are we going to look at are we going to get that stuff that's redacted or is it like secret somewhere? Um, it kind of made me think about stuff. And that's what I was trying to bring up when I first started talking. Thank you. Right. And, and some of that stuff has to do with uh, investigative and police methods and, and, and whatnot that they wouldn't want to necessarily get out. Uh, it's, it's funny you're mentioning that me and Mr. Pichardo was speaking about that this very issue uh, the, earlier this afternoon get, and getting ready for this this meeting. It is it, it is a problem and, and um, maybe we could uh, ask that a, a, a group of us, maybe the, the committee actually get to view those. Again, uh, within the, within the realm of, of page seven, it's, it's, it's really the, uh, the, the collaborative saying, you know we, we, we can't give you a definitive answer on this because we, we don't have all the information. I understand why they redacted it, but I think we could have done a better job 
uh, we had some folks from the police department that were included in these different groups. And I, I don't know how that particular group interfaced with their their police count, the, the, the police person that was in there, but that that should have um, been worked through through better um, with uh, folks getting more information. Because I, I understand you're making a decision based on some stuff that you. you yeah, and there's have. a good line on the, the third one about how to de-escalate. And I think that's what, I think as a city, that's what most people want. We don't want to have these confrontations. We want to be able to de-escalate you know, this violence and um, and it is violence against our own citizens, I feel, but you know, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Uh, Frederick. I think Ms. Farrell has her hand up. She can go first. Okay. Thank you. I, um, so I, I have read through um, I read the report before um, and then have read through the additional 20 some odd pages. And, um, and I appreciate some different pieces. I first and foremost appreciate the work of everybody that was involved in the collaborative because um, there was, was a great deal of work that people definitely put a lot of time in. Um, and I also appreciate um, working towards having action items in the beginning part, however, even with that, my I guess my concern, with, and I think I'll be echoing what some other people said, I don't feel like there's a real accountability structure for it. So there are action items, but a lot of them are kind of nebulous on who does the action or exactly what you're doing the action for. Sometimes there's contradictions. Um, the example I have is, uh, I don't know if I have the page up, but uh, they talk about school resource officers and they, in one part, they say, um, we'll abolish school resource officers. And then in the next action item, it says it's going to meet with the school district to determine what the future of school resource officers should be, which that makes a lot of sense to me to have a full conversation about it, but it doesn't necessarily go with a bullet point. So in order for there to be some sort of accountability structure, it's, you can't have contradictions like that. Um, how do you make sure it talks about APD will provide updates. Is it actually appropriate for APD to be the one providing the updates? You know, are they going to be keeping themselves accountability, accountable through this process um, in the way that we want them to? I fully believe that they would do their best to do that, but there's some pieces that APD can't really report back on. So who's going to be doing that work? Where is that oversight? Um, and then how do we get the legislative or policy change that we need to pass? So what is that process? Um, so I, I guess that's my, to me, it's lacking an accountability structure, which is what we really need as a legislative body to be able to go back to and say, these pieces are missing, or we've been waiting for this report. Um, different layers like that. And it should be consistent too. So, um, you know, you shouldn't have a pull up, bullet point saying, we're going to definitely do this. And then, you know, action item, we're going to talk about it more. So it, it felt like there was, that's my concerns with it. Thank you uh, for that, uh, Ms. Farrell. Uh, Ms. Frederick? Yeah, to, to that point, is it is it possible to go back and ask for like responsible parties in, in different layers to add to each one as opposed to just A, B, C? Yeah, we, I, I, would, I would argue that, yeah. we uh, And that's why we're having this discussion to kind of flesh this stuff, this stuff out. Um, so we're looking for more clarity uh, of, uh, Matt, with the responsibility, um, and um, so so yeah, Mr. Pichardo, I hope you're taking notes because the idea is to get you know put all this stuff together and then have a, a further conversation with uh, the administration about making those changes because in the end, realistically, the resolution is what we're you know we're going to end up doing, but we want to do a resolution that supports where we want this thing to be, um, you know, where we want the plan to be and, and what we want it to look like. So, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. We'll take, okay. we'll take everything from our conversations and, and have a further conversation. We're, and everyone's bringing up some good points and, and, and they're very similar. Um, and, and, and it's about accountability. Um, so, so thank you all for that. And so with that, I will, uh, any other council members know? Um, so, uh, Ms. Hilly, you, you had your, your hand up before we'll move on to you all. Just, Just give me like two seconds. Let me pull over. Okay. Distracted driving. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you for this. So I am in kind of the same boat that Alfredo, that um, Councilman Polaro, sorry. Um, Ballerin, forgive me. I feel like it's Monday every day. Um, is in, I did not realize, I thought I had read the last one, but I did not realize that there was more amendments to it. And actually, after that was mentioned, I think by um, Councilman Hoey, that some parts are missing. Actually, half of our report is missing for um, operating procedures and general orders groups. So um, there, I, I'm like, it just stops. So if you actually look at what's in the GO section of that 19 pages, and then you look section of the report it's not that things are omitted it actually stops it doesn't go to the rest of the geo report so I don't know um, to do to, to councilwoman Duches, um point I don't know if things were omitted um, because it doesn't pick back up so there's not like things missing in our report um, there's not things omitted excuse me in our report there's actually a large section of it that doesn't continue um i did just reach out like i i do definitely understand the concerns that the council has and as um one of the co-chairs for the geo section i did just reach out to the other members to ask them if they would be interested in having another meeting i feel like we might be better equipped to provide some kind of a plan since we actually did the review and did the work on that, um, that we might be able to, to provide something a little bit more uh, structured and something that you guys could work with. Um, because I, I totally understand everything you guys are saying. Also, like with that section about the omissions, this was a, I did have a conversation with Jasmine about that, that hopefully there would be some way, and maybe that's through the council or maybe that's through corporate council, that somebody would look at that, at what's in the omission and ensure that what's in the omission is written in a way that's unbiased. Um, it was disappointing. It's, it's hard to read a redacted document because your brain knows that things are missing. Um, so there were some struggles for us as members who had sections that were heavily redacted. Um, you know, light redactions, you can can work around but there were some sections that were heavily redacted and they did kind of mess up the flow with reading them and you know to councilman kimbrough's point i understand why it was redacted there were some redactions that didn't really make any sense to me um because reading them you knew it was underneath them and some of them were like form numbers that were redacted out but the form name was there or it was attached to the gen or it was attached to the general the end of the general order but it was redacted earlier in it so there those redactions did cause us some some struggle um and there's definitely got to be some kind of a group that does review them in their entirety to just to ensure that that language is a is appropriate and in line with the rest of the recommendations that are made or that are enacted um and i think that my group can go back and at least point out what's administrative I think there's several recommendations that were made that really require just require language changes and updates. Like there were several pieces, raise the age was one of them, um, the domestic violence um, incidents was another that could be done in-house and could be done in uh, just a few months because they're, they're literally just 
taking the language that's in the legislature already that means that's required to be used so hopefully i don't know how other groups are going to handle this but i'm going to to work with mine and see if we can create something that provides you guys with a, a little bit of a better idea and work with jasmine on our section of it in in general oh and thank you all No, thank you uh, very much, Ms. Hillary. Miss uh, um, Manning. Hi, thanks guys. Um, so tonight I'm giving comments as the assistant director of the Center for Law and Justice, not as like Lauren from the community who's always yelling at you guys. So um, thanks. Thank you for this opportunity for the Center for Law and Justice to submit public comment on the city's proposed policing plan. I submit these comments on behalf of our executive director, Dr. Alice Green, who regrets that she is unable to attend tonight. This plan is extremely disappointing to the community. While the collaborative's members developed a comprehensive body of recommendations that could produce truly transformative change, the city has failed to produce a coherent plan. Fortunately, the future of a reinvented public safety system does not rest solely on this wholly inadequate plan. Whether the plan is accepted or rejected, there are other avenues available to the Common Council to reinvent policing in Albany. The center will soon share with the council the community's vision of what reinvented pol policing could look like in our city because Black lives do matter. The center has previously pointed out that the plan is riddled with equivocal language and escape clauses that commit the city to virtually nothing. Today, we focus on process. As disappointed as the Albany community is with this woefully inadequate plan, we are also realistic. We understand the Common Council is faced with a difficult choice. If you vote to accept this plan in its current state, you lend it legitimacy. If you vote to reject it according to the governor's orders, the city stands to lose state funding. If the council rejects the plan, the city will have but two weeks to produce the major overhaul needed. Let's face reality here. The city has had the collaborative's recommendations in hand since mid-January. If they haven't produced the proper plan in two months, it is unlikely they will be able to do so in two weeks. The sad truth is that while the city may face financial penalty if it does not ratify a plan by April 1st, there are no consequences if it submits a plan promising little change. State representatives have explicitly stated that the state does not intend to assess if a plan is in accord with the reinvention language of the Executive Order 203, nor does it intend to entertain objections from community groups that their city's plan is inadequate. Instead, all that a locality needs to do is submit a plan no matter how substandard, along with a certification form. The mayor can simply check the boxes signifying that a policing review was accomplished, some community stakeholders were included, and that a plan was developed, offered for public comment, and ratified by the Common Council. The form does not require that the plan reinvent policing. The center appreciates the Hobson's choice faced by the council. Some council members already have signaled that they think the plan in its current form is adequate. From the community's perspective, it most certainly is not. If the council ratifies this plan, the center asks that you simultaneously pass a resolution stating that this plan does not reinvent policing in Albany and that the council remains committed to implementing the public safety changes so desperately needed by our city's communities of color. The center looks forward to working with the council to effect truly transformative change in Albany policing. Thank you. That was it. Thank you, uh, Ms. Manning. And we, we have a copy of those comments which we'll include with the record. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, any further uh, comments? No?
Are you trying to unmute uh, Mr. Shea? It's, you're up. If you want to speak. So, so I just got um, a text from somebody who was saying that they entered something in the chat, but I'm not seeing it. They, um, they need to leave. Um, so are we getting other comments that we want to share as we do when we get public comments? Yeah. Um, I I don't, I don't see anything in the chat. I'm sorry to cut you off. We're looking at the Facebook chat. Oh, uh, is that what might be? That they might be referring to the Facebook stream. Oh, is that going on separately right now? It yes. All right. Yeah. So in the Facebook stream, there's some comments about the council needs to engage someone outside to oversee the implementation of what is decided. The council wants in a plan and then one needs to know what the council wants to act on and what the accountability will be. That's what I see so far. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is that something you can copy and paste into the chat or no? Because I can't, I don't see it. I mean, I heard. I, I, I yeah, heard what I can do that. Give me a second. I think in the future, it's good to have someone monitor that. I think sometimes there's information where people are trying to get to us. Sometimes it's, 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 it's just, hey, how are you? But there's sometimes there's information that people are trying to get to us, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not something we can see because we're not on, you know, we're not on Facebook. We're on Zoom. And the only thing we have access to is the Zoom chat at this time. So maybe if it's possible, if maybe, maybe even just, you know, I don't know, even a council um, that's more tech savvy and down with the social media stuff, just, just to keep us, just so that we, right. we, we've got that information. Because I, 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 I tend to try to follow both because it gives me ideas, of, you know, a sense as to what people are saying out there in terms of comments, et cetera, as we go along, but it, you have to switch back and forth. Yeah, and, and before when we had our, our, remember we're missing a staffer that we normally have, we, 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 we caught, used to catch, uh, you know, some of the Facebook comments, but we're, we're, we're kind of stretched here. Um, but that's a good idea. That's a good idea to actually to monitor that because, again, we do want to capture those comments and not everyone jumps into a Zoom meeting. So we'll have to, we'll have to um, figure a way to, to get that over um, into, into our conversation. It's one of the um, benefits of doing it like this is that you, 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 you can reach people who maybe don't use this technology, but uh, you know still have access to the, other, the technology that they are comfortable with. Okay, this is great. Okay, wants to. Okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, Carol Dean Washington says Richard is correct one needs to know what the council wants to act on and what the accountability will be. And I mean, the bit, the most important piece of this is, I mean, again, we're talking about transparency and accountability. Um, that's what we're working towards. So um, yeah, having some, some clarity with, with some of these things would, would uh, help um, in nailing, nailing some of this stuff down would, would be much more helpful uh, in our final, um, you know, as we're moving ahead uh, with this. Uh, any more uh, comments? Um, I don't, I'm not seeing um, any uh, further comments. Uh, Mr. Hoey? Yeah, you know, uh, I guess, and, and Kelly, you, you understand it uh, probably a lot more because you were a policeman, but I am really concerned about, like I was reading, you know, further on about use of deadly force and the instances like resisting arrest. I mean, and again, I'm, I, I'm not a policeman, so I don't understand, but I just can't understand killing somebody if they're resisting arrest. And now, does that mean they're carrying a gun and resisting arrest? Or is it, you know, a traffic stop and somebody doesn't want to, um, you know, put hand, get handcuffs put on? You know, how far do we go? And and I'm kind of concerned, I, I, I would like to know what are the circumstances 
where deadly force could be used. And I, I think as a lawmaker that we deserve to know, you know, what can happen and you know what the results are if we allow certain stuff to happen. So, you know, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, right. you know, and that's right. why I'm looking at you. Right. And, and the thing is, the circumstances vary. Um, again, it's usually not the resisting. I mean, there's, it, it, it's called resisting arrest, but there's some other stuff going on in there that leads to, to the, some of it's justified, some of it's not. Um, and it's case by case. It depends on the, cir the circumstances. Uh, what's been, you know, an issue with in policing is that, again, it, it's, it's, Every every officer is different. They go. They talk about frame of mind and 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 reasonable person, what they would do or not. Or excuse me, another what another reasonable officer in that instance would do. Um, and so th those are the standards. It's it's kind of and, and again, it, each person is different, so it's subjective. I mean, the, the responses to to violence or or these issues are different. Some officers are more confident. And and you actually mentioned the the. Uh, the conflict resolution, uh, it, it's important. It, it, there was a course uh, in my time with the police department, it was a verbal judo course where, you, I mean, sometimes you have to fight, but more times than not, you talking, just talking and relating and, and communicating with a person can avoid those, those, those crappy uh, and bad interactions. Um, and unfortunately for some of these young men, and I, I, I say this all the time, at, my experience, I'm African-American, my experience with the police, I mean, I had some pretty bad experiences with the police, but my everyday experience with the police isn't the same. I, I mean, some of the folks that, uh, that in, in some of our other communities that, that have these interactions, they're on a daily, it's, it's just not, it's negative from, from the beginning. And I, I always, um, and I, I think of the Eric Garner video where he was going on about why are you always messing with me? Why are you effing with me? That that spoke to his experience. That talk that spoke to his lived experience. That that was probably I mean he just wasn't doing that for the camera. His every day was probably that he was getting stopped and 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 we do things to put ourselves in different situations that can lend themselves to being stopped. But but certainly nobody deserves to be, you know. I, again, I, I could see and hear frustration in his voice leading up to, you know, uh, his, his death. And again, we, we, uh, we really, um, and this is, uh, and, and I fall on both sides of this issue. I, 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 I can understand in some instances, there are instances where I have conversations with folks about an incident that occurred. And some people think that the officer shouldn't have use force or this that and the other and there and and as a person of color i'm thinking i would have maybe fired my weapon or i would have did exactly what the officer did it's it's different um so it, it's it's again uh the use of force i mean there are laws on it again it's uh, but the response is it's all subjective we're all different folks like a obviously a, a five foot uh you know 90 pound woman or officer would be justified in in discharging her weapon where me at my size you know people expect you to fight and interact with people it's different it, it's just it, it, there's no easy answer um it's just it's it's all it's different it's it's uh it's it's and, and again we we end up in some tough situations behind some of these uh reactions that we have it, in, in these pressure situations, if you think about it, we have, and that's not, I'm not here to make excuses for, for officers or whatever, but you, when you think about some of these instances, given the amount of information and in, in the situation, you, you know, again, um, but we really need to um, think, think, uh, think through stuff uh, before putting hands on people. I mean, there's, uh, it, it just, there are very few things I think that should cause you to to use physical force, especially when you're trying to get someone to comply over simple things, because those things can escalate into bad things. So um, I'll I'll stop talking there because I could just ramble Thank on you. about this stuff. I I, I I lay awake at night 
uh, thinking about this and worrying about it, being on both sides of this. Uh, again, I can understand a lot of this stuff. I can understand the community's response to it, and I can understand the police side of this. And it, I mean, it just it, it varies, and each situation is different. So, thank you, uh, Ms. Doshe. So first, I want to say um, I've never been a police officer, and I'm glad I haven't been in the kinds of situations um, that they have uh, been in. Uh, with my husband having been a city court judge, um, police officers would come late at night and get you know search warrants uh, signed, um, and and or you know the middle of the night um and uh, you know his wishes for them was always you know stay safe um and uh, you know we can't as we say you know what we would have done keeping in mind that uh they are putting their lives on the line uh, so much of the time and uh, and that's part of the experience that they bring to that uh, to their jobs, um, and and they have people telling them to stay safe. Uh, you know their loved ones and other people in the community. Um, but Mr. Kimbrough, as you were talking, um, I was recalling something that I've heard Chief Hawkins um, say frequently, and that is part of the problem with the amount of gun violence that we have in the city violence, violent crime that we have in the city is that we have a lot of people, especially younger people, who just don't have the skill sets to figure out how to talk things out, how to uh, work on de-escalating a situation and having a conversation about stuff that bothers them. Some of it is about some of what gets, uh, I, my words, revved up on uh, social media. Um, but um, so um, that's a problem that we're acknowledging in our community. I think it, it's a very astute observation. And essentially, you were saying the same thing about some of our police officers. Um, so uh, it's an, I think, I think it's an interesting dialogue to have about having our police officers be role models in and teaching our youth how to talk things out, how to de-escalate situations, um, using those skills, uh, helping them develop those skills, police officers develop those skills so that they can then model it and teach it uh, to other people uh, in the community and also in the process help police community relations, and, and I wanna say, and just overall help uh, the safety, improve the safety um, uh, and trust, um, safety of our community and our police officers, as well as improving uh, the trust that our community has in our police officers. Um, so, but it's just, you know, I was really struck by how police chief talks about exactly what you're talking about for so much of our community at large. And um, I think, you know, just something for us to, uh, I think, continue to focus on. Um, if we are concerned about both our police officers and uh, people in our community, especially our youth having those skill sets then maybe that is something that should be, I don't know, I don't think I've come across that quite in that way in this report um, um, as a recommendation uh, coming out of the reform. And maybe that is something that we add uh, to this. But I appreciate your honesty and struggles uh, that that you have. And um, as I struggle with these issues, I don't want anybody to think that I um, minimize or take for granted in any way what our police officers are dealing with every day. And my goal is just to help make them safer and help them perform their job better and making sure that they have the uh, training and the support 
and we all engage in these kinds of dialogues uh, to be a healthier community. Thank you, Ms. Boucher. So uh, if there's no further comment, um, we're gonna be adjourning. However, the goal is take what we, we learned here today and came up with here today, have a conversation, get some clarity and, and refine this thing. Um, we have a meeting coming up on the 8th of March. We'll come back. Uh, ho hopefully we can get those changes and it's look a little different and we'll discuss that on the 8th and then and, and move forward. It'll be similar to this, but we'll try to work through uh, what we're, um, you know, our expectations and, and what we want this to look like. And hopefully it'll be closer uh, when we have our, our, our next conversation. So, um, Mr. Ballerin. Thank you. My, my only question is on the A, we're not going to be asking, we're gonna be asked to adopt this. We're gonna be asked to do a resolution that says, creates a timetable of how we're gonna be reviewing this uh, and putting this into action, correct? Correct. Well, the, as far as the committee okay. is concerned, yeah. And then we st we still have uh, to take it up at our next full council meeting. Um, because I, I think we need to. I think there's a lot of he information here, and I, and I think we need to digest a lot of it. Also, bring in people from the collaborative to explain some of their thoughts and some of their recommendations, which I think we talked about doing at the last meeting. Um, because there's, there's some questions that I'm sure we all have about some of the recommendations and what their, their thoughts were in making those recommendations. So I want to make sure this isn't just going to be, it's going to be something that is going to be a process and not just quick. Right, yeah. It, and that's that's not the intention. And, and just based on what you're saying and what we've been talking about here, I mean, I, it would be great to if we, you know, to take the time and go through and get all the information from every one of the groups, but I would argue that we 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 have it in in their reports. What we don't have, and and I was on one of the groups. And I I don't recall being asked to come up with a plan because I like Miss Hilly is saying right now, we could we can get together and and come up with something. I think if from the onset we, that was the goal, uh, I think maybe we would have thought a little different and kind of wrote everything up a little bit differently. On, on, on the collaborative, but I think getting input from the different chairs on, on a plan or, 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 or a way to term what the report says in the action would, would, would be helpful. And that, I mean, if, if we had, a, a, the fact of the matter is time-wise, we just, we're, we, uh, I mean, we could, have the meeting on the eighth. Have another meeting after that, and then plan for. A, I don't a even meeting. think. No, I, I mean Kelly. I'm sorry for cutting you off. I don't think. I don't. Th I, I think this is going to take more than just a couple of meetings um, right, right. to be flushed through. And and I think it's good to have people who help write it come back and and, and bring them back into the fold because they put a lot of work into it. And you know, there's some things that I have questions on on why they want to go in that direction. Um, I want to hear that out before I'm like, well, I really don't understand that. And these are my personal experiences with some of these issues. So, you know, I want to get their experiences as well. So that's not just, um, so that's not taken, so that we take that into account when we're looking at this. So I guess that's my, my only point is, and I'm not so worried about April 1st, because I think we are far ahead of many other municipalities on, on what was asked for us to do uh, last year. So I, I guess that's why I'm not as concerned as on April 1st. Uh, I'm more concerned on making sure that we go through this and, and uh, you know, make sure individuals' voices are heard because, you know, I've, like I said, I've got my perspective, you have your perspective, everyone has their perspectives, but I want the perspectives of those who have helped write this as well, so that that's also brought to the forefront. Thank you, um, Mr. Ballerin. And, I, I, you know, moving forward, everyone has to have the understanding and, and know that, that April 
you know, meeting the April 1st deadline isn't the end of this. This is an ongoing process. The work needs to be ongoing. I mean, it's, it's just even, you know, passing a re resolution, moving ahead with the work. I mean, this is ongoing. This is uh, something that we're going to constantly need to work on. Our police department's constantly going to need to work on. Our community's constantly, you know, because these things are fluid, it changes. Um, and I, I don't know who said it. It's not a uh, the ending of this. It's really the beginning um, of of this work. So okay, um, with that, um, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. In the on the okay. All right. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. Stay warm. <laughs>